This is the Speedland SL PDX. It's a high performance trail racer that makes no compromises. It's customizable, it's configurable, and it's capable. But at $375, does it make any sense? It's time to lace up the SL PDX and take them for a run. Seven point six four miles, nine hundred and twenty nine feet of elevation gain in Starved Rock State Park in Ottawa, Illinois. Going for my first run in the Speedland SL PDX. Now, before I give you my thoughts on this shoe after just this first run, I do want to go over some disclosures. This is a pair of shoes that was sent to me for the purpose of review. However, nobody is paying me to make this video or to use the shoe. But no one's going to get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So with that disclosure out of the way, let's talk about the Speedland SL PDX. First, let's talk about the, some specs on this shoe. And that's probably going to be the, like the longest part of this video because there's just a bunch of stuff going on in this shoe. First, let's talk about the stack height. It's got a 28 millimeter stack height in the heel with a five millimeter drop, giving us about 23 millimeters of stack height in the forefoot. And in this midsole, you can actually change what is in the midsole. Now, normally you have this p backs midsole, which is an insert that is removable, but there is a spot on the bottom here where you can add or remove a carbon fiber plate. And this carbon fiber plate is a Carpitex carbon fiber plate with a split fork design. It also serves as a bit of a rock plate for the shoe, although I'm not really sure that this shoe even needs to use that as so much of a rock plate. On the outsole, we've got Michelin rubber and there's just a bunch of it. There's actually kind of a two tier system of lugs and the shoe, I don't know if the shoe always comes with it, but at least in the shoes that I got, it came with a little set of clippers so that it could clip off the top layer of these lugs to customize it for whatever kind of terrain or weather pattern that I might be encountering if I'm going to be using this for a race. They do warn you on the packaging though, and it should be pretty self-evident that you're cutting rubber off the bottom of the shoes if you are going to customize these lugs. So you can't, you know, put stuff back on. It's like a haircut. It can go shorter, but it can't go longer. Now up top, we have a lot of technology here as well. There is a double BOA system. And now the way that these work, they use dials 
and they pull on these different cables that are in the shoe and they can be tightened to ensure a snug fit and these different parts of the shoe kind of start to then add some more tension to the shoe as your foot is inside. The nice thing about these particular BOA closures is that they are also reverse functioning as well. So if I wanna loosen it just a little bit or a lot, I can also turn it in the opposite direction to loosen the fit of these shoes. And then of course, like the way the regular bows work is if you pull it out all the way, then it just completely releases and you can very quickly get in and out of the shoe. As far as the materials in the upper, there is knit in the upper, but it's used in some strategic places. They've got it in the tongue, which I think is really nice. It's a very comfortable there. It's Dyneema knit, which I don't think I've ever encountered before, but it's very soft, very stretchy. I felt like this was a very comfortable tongue for me. And because there aren't laces up top, uh, instead you have these kind of bands of other material that are doing the cinching as far as the lockdown goes in the shoe. I felt like I didn't need any padding in this tongue at all. And it was very comfortable even when the shoe was cinched down. Now this knit goes around towards part of the heel collar, but then it changes into something that is a little bit more padded in the back here. And mainly it comes in a bit of a bumper pad and that bumper pad is sitting on top of a semi-rigid uh, heel cup in the back. Now moving toward the front of the shoe and on the sides, there seems to be something that's more of a ripstop type of material that is still very flexible and very soft, but it's a little bit more durable of a material than the knit material would be. And then there's overlays at the toe bumper, as well as the rubber that's on this uh, shoe that's coming from the outsole reaches up a little bit higher than the outsole rubber normally would or kind of like where like midsole foam would be instead you have kind of an outer shell of rubber that's coming all the way up from the bottom and wrapping up around the shoe all told this shoe comes in at a relatively lightweight package for at least a trail shoe it's coming in for me and my size nine with the lugs still on and not in kind of like the clipped configuration at 10.3 ounces or 292 grams so what is it like to run in the shoe Overall, I'll say that the shoe is a success. It's a very fun shoe to run in. It was very capable on the trails. I felt like I had a lot of great grip, but I also felt like the shoe was a lot of fun to run in. I would describe the feeling of the shoe as being a snappy ride. So I've run in a variety of different trail shoes and I'm not the most experienced trail runner out there. I'm more of a roads guy, but in terms of my experience on the trails, I generally put kind of like trail shoes into three categories. One is flat and fast. One is super cushioned, run on the trails all day. And the third category is basically like, this is a hiking boot, but we're gonna call it a running shoe. So like those are the three categories. And this shoe for me kind of is somewhere in between the flat and fast and the super cushioned. The fact that there's a P-Bax insert for the midsole that's in here makes it for a very snappy ride. And the way that they've cut this midsole as well uh, also i think helps in aiding some of that snappiness and that snap back but also the p back material is very comfortable to land on and so that's what's giving me the feeling that it's a very fast shoe but also it seems to be a pretty cushioned shoe add to that the fact that you can add in or leave in because it comes with the carbon plate in you can leave in the carbon fiber plate now the carbon fiber plate isn't like a super rigid carbon fiber plate it's not like some of the marathon super shoes that i tend to love I have like a really strong like push off feeling coming almost like as if someone's shoving you from behind with the carbon fiber with this the carbon fiber is much more subtle so it's not like jarring a lot of people have been talking about like why would you want a carbon fiber plate on the trails where the terrain is uneven and it's not like you're going flat and fast it might be awkward to get a real strong carbon fiber push when you're on a trail and i don't feel like it's awkward at all i feel like it's tuned really well for this type of application where sometimes you will be going fast downhill, sometimes you will be charging uphill, or maybe you're just trying to maintain a relatively moderate pace in some of the flats. And I feel like in all those situations, I do like having the carbon in there. I did run for a period of time without the carbon fiber plate in. I had my pack on and a point during the run, I stopped, took the carbon fiber plates out, put them in my pack and then continued running. And I felt like I didn't like the shoe as much without the carbon fiber plate in there. It was almost as if the shoe had been kind of like deflated a little bit. Uh, it's not exactly what's happening because there's no air in this, but it just didn't feel like it was quite as snappy. Everything just felt a little bit more muddled in a way that I didn't quite enjoy. So 
even for a run today where I wasn't trying to race anywhere uh, and I was just kind of just enjoying the trails and going at whatever pace the kind of the terrain threw at me. I felt like I definitely enjoyed it more when I had the carbon fiber plate in. But I think another part of this shoe is that I'm feeling a lot of this rubber outsole. Now these lugs are really tall and these are probably the tallest lugs that I've ever run on. My personal preference for trail shoes generally tends to be those crossover shoes, those shoes that you can run on pavement to get to the trailhead and then also while you're on the trails. For whatever reason, those are the ones that tend to appeal to me the most, not necessarily because I wanna run on my trail shoes on roads, but just those shoes that are designed for that use case tend to like line up with my preferences better, even if I'm using that shoe only on the trails. And so that took a little bit of getting used to in this shoe because I definitely felt like this shoe had like some really stiff lugs in it. It's balanced out by the fact that there's this P-Bax midsole, there's P-Bax midsole kind of insert, uh, but I'm still feeling a lot of those two sensations together. And the fact that I didn't like hate these really stiff, tall lugs, I think is a testament to how they're like meshing these two kind of sensations together in a way that's working. So the terrain that I was running on for today was mostly really buffed out. So as far as like really being able to test the SLPDX, I still think I need to find stuff that's a little bit even more intense. Like I wasn't really doing any scrambling or anything like that today. The loosest kind of terrain that I ran on was sand, but I had sand, I had some like rocks that I was running on, uh, but like smooth, like running on limestone. I'm thinking it's limestone rocks that are predominantly out there or really buffed out trails. But other times I was running on wood planking or on sidewalks. A lot of those regions have actually been paved in this park, which I wasn't aware of when I made the two hour drive to out there. Now, I do think that I probably, for the vast majority of running that I do, probably should have clipped uh, the outer layer of the lugs. And they did tell me to do that, so or suggest that I do that when the shoes came to me. The other thing that you can also clip are these two little plugs right here, which are drainage holes. When I got the shoes wet, water definitely got in the shoe and it took a while for it to kind of squeeze its way back out and that was a little bit annoying. I think if I clipped either one or both of these drainage holes, there are corresponding drainage holes in this p insert in terms of the midsole. So I think a lot of that water would have really just rushed right out. And I think that would have been the better way for me to use the shoe. But for now, I'm gonna leave everything plugged and I will, I'm not sure if I'm actually going to clip these lugs uh, just because one, I don't like doing that. I feel like I'm gonna mess up the shoe if I do that. And number two, I tend to use trail shoes most when there's bad weather in the Midwest. Now we don't have a lot of elevation. We don't have a lot of mountains and like roots and like really knobby, unpredictable, rocky, slimy trails to run on. But I do run in lots of like really cold temperatures and I do run in lots of inclement weather. And that's where I feel like a shoe like this would really come in handy. And I'm gonna leave it plugged up so that way I can hopefully not have an area of ingress for cold slushy water from Lake Michigan in the middle of winter. So that's how I think I'm ultimately going to leave it. The one thing that I will say is, I think part of it is because the lugs were longer than they needed to be for the terrain that I was on for today. Uh, and also because the terrain that I was on today was sometimes actual just sidewalk pavement. I did feel like at the end of the day that my heels felt a little bit kind of tender. Not during the run, during the run it felt great. So I do wish that the shoe were a little bit more forgiving on the body. Now talking about the upper, I felt like this was one of the most comfortable running shoe uppers that I've run in in a long time. Yes, there's a lot there and it's not necessarily going to be like a hot weather shoe because there are lots of layers, but I do like the BOA system that you can tighten things down uh, and tighten them down differentially depending on like kind of which side of the shoe. So if you want more ankle lockdown and if you want more towards the top of the foot, then you'll go for the back dial and really crank down on that. If you want a little bit more room in the toe box, you don't have to go as hard on this first knob. And I do appreciate that you can also reverse the clicks and loosen it in very fine increments. So that way you can crank it down and then loosen it to exactly where you want it to feel so you get it just right. I think that for the trail application, it makes a ton of sense for me because let's say you're going through it and you're stopping from like aid station to aid station, you can think about, all right, what do I have coming up next? 
Um, I've got a nice big flat area or my feet are really hurting from all that downhill that I just came through. Let's loosen up a little bit, let my feet kind of breathe a little bit more where it's not gonna be that technical or it's gonna be more technical. Let's crank it down and make sure uh, I'm getting the good fit. And overall, like it's not exactly a foot shaped toe box, but I felt like I had the right balance in terms of space in the toe box, but also a snug fit. So that way when I did have some difficult terrain to go over and different elevations that I was going up and down, I felt like I was always secure enough uh, that my foot wasn't sliding around inside the shoe. So I feel like this is one of the more comfortable and technically stable uppers that I've been able to run in for trail shoes. So the beginning of the video, I asked the question of, is this shoe worth the $375 price tag? And overall, I'm not sure that it is. I think that what they have here is is very interesting. I like the concept. I, I understand, I think, where they're trying to go, where they're not thinking of it as an individual running shoe, but ru trail running equipment that you can configure and modify depending on the specific needs of the day. And I think that ultimately where this may be going is not that this is a running shoe, but this becomes a platform for an in interchangeable like running system. So the fact that this midsole is removable is useful not only because you can put in or out this carbon fiber plate. I'm wondering, and I have no idea, I haven't talked to them about what their future plans are or if they have future plans. Maybe it depends on you know how things go with the initial launch. But I would be interested to see is what does this shoe feel like with a, a stiffer carbon? if that's possible, or something that's a little bit more rigid than this plate is, or what can we do to make this feel even softer? So let's say instead of a seven and a half mile trail run for today, let's say I wanna go for a 20 mile trail run or I'm doing a 100K or a 100 mile race. And I don't necessarily want the springiness of P-backs, but I want maybe something that's a little bit more forgiving in terms of being on your feet all day. Like, is there a different material that might still be able to fit within this general dimension that could give me that extra plushness or that extra squish? And I love the idea of this shell might be something that I carry with me for years. And as I need to, I can switch out midsoles and or even carbon fiber plates. So that's where I think that this is going and that's where I feel like, all right, now you're buying into an ecosystem and not just an app. And that's where I feel like the 375 then starts to make a lot more sense. The thing is, the thing that I would probably like to configure most, the lug pattern, is a thing that you can only configure once. And so like, I don't know if it, like a removable track spike type system is probably too heavy to really make this a feasible option. Um, but some way where I can configure the lugs. So if I'm doing my normal trail runs, like if I'm going to the trails that I've been hitting in Iowa, which are pretty similar in nature to the trails that I hit in this video for today, um, I can have one kind of like layout, but let's say I'm going for a race or I'm traveling to a race where I know the terrain's gonna be different. Maybe I'm visiting some Appalachian trails when I'm going back to visit my family on the East Coast, or maybe I'm heading out to some trails out on the West Coast where the terrain is very different still. That's something that I feel like could be really interesting and where the lug pattern configurability, I feel like that's something that I would love to see them try and tackle and solve and how, how do we get about doing that? Maybe the idea is just then, you know, you're buying a couple of different um, of these shells, you're buying a couple of different midsoles and a couple of different carbon fiber plates or maybe just rock plates. Uh, and then you're mixing and matching those elements into a whatever trail racing shoe that you want to configure for that particular day. Maybe that's where that's going. I'm not sure if that's where it's going yet. Today, I could say for what they have in front of me for the 375, it's a lot. And for me, for the price, if we're just doing like, I, I know this isn't like purely a math economical decision in terms of this shoe system versus other shoes. But if we're, if we are gonna just kind of go down that way for just a second, I'm thinking for 375, I can get a pair of super thick, squishy, on my feet all day trail shoes. And I can get super flat and fast trail shoes to race in for a shorter trail distance run or for a trail workout and still be at about the same spot. So there are certainly a lot of ways to look at this shoe. Is it a really good trail shoe? I would say absolutely yes. Is it a lot of fun to run in? Yes, again, 
for sure. Is it a shoe that I want to race in? Depending on the distance of that trail race, I would say again, an absolute yes. Is it worth it? I think for most people, if they have to stop and think about whether it's worth it, it's probably not worth it for you. But if you're looking at what you've seen here and are like, man, I gotta have that, I think you're going to enjoy running in this new style of running equipment, which is the Speedland SL PDX. So those are my thoughts on this shoe after just this first trail run. I'll be doing more trail runs in this shoe for sure because I did have such a good time. Hit the subscribe button so you could see those videos when they hit. And if you have any comments, feel free to put them down below or better yet, feel free to stop by the live stream that I do Monday through Friday right here on YouTube. And I'd love to talk to you guys in the chat. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I'll see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?